today we're going to talk about adjective clauses, and I broke this series into three different parts, so be sure to check out the other two. But this is just the introduction and overview. So the first thing I want to do is review sentence structure with you. Um, we learned that with an adverb clause, we have an independent clause that has a subject, a verb, sometimes an object. We add to it a dependent clause with a subordinating conjunction, like when, before, because, if, things like that, plus a subject, plus a verb. Okay. Remember, dependent clauses cannot stand on their own. They have to have an independent clause to create meaning. Well, an adjective clause is kind of built the same way, in the sense that we have an independent clause, and we also have a dependent clause. However, instead of a subordinating conjunction, we have a relative pronoun plus a subject plus a verb, or a relative pronoun plus a verb. And I'll explain why we have two options in just a moment. So let's talk about what an adjective clause is. Well, we know that adjectives describe nouns. For example, the White House. White here is my adjective. House is my noun. Okay. Well, adjective clauses describe nouns too. For example, the book that attracted a lot of public attention was published twice. That is my relative pronoun, and it's describing the book. Okay. Um, so here my clause goes from that to attention. The difference here is that an adjective clause adds more information about a noun or a pronoun in the main clause. What I mean by that is the book was published twice is my main clause, and that attracted a lot of atten public attention is my adjective clause. So technically, the book was published twice can stand on its own, um, but we added the adjective clause to give extra information about the book. So where do we use adjective clauses? There's two places. After the main clause, so for example, I like the restaurant, which is located on Main Street. So here's my main clause, and then here's my adjective clause. Or I can do it inside the main clause. My friend, who is from Japan, is visiting for Thanksgiving. My friend is visiting for Thanksgiving is my main clause, and the adjective clause here is sitting inside of it. So why do we use adjective clauses? To identify a specific noun. In this example, if I say, I like the restaurant, you're not going to really know which restaurant I'm talking about. So by adding an adjective clause, which is located on Main Street, now you know which restaurant I am talking to. So it's used to identify specific nouns and you know, if you look at your article, the restaurant, it's not specific enough to tell me which restaurant. Um, so when you see things like a restaurant, the restaurant, um, adjective clauses can help identify those for you. To add extra information about something, for example, Maha, who is from Saudi Arabia, really likes to learn English. So here is my subject, Maha. And this adjective clause is adding extra information about her um, inside of my main clause. And one of the most important things is when you're writing essays, it's going to give your sources credibility. Um, what I mean by that is, if we look at this example, okay, um, here's my argument. Um, they, and this is referring to millennials, this is from an article called the Me, Me, Me Generation. They got this way partly because in the 1970s, people wanted to improve kids' chances of success by instilling self-esteem. It turns out that self-esteem is great for getting a job or hooking up at a bar, but not so great for keeping a job or a relationship. So here is my argument, and now I'm going to use an outside source to support that argument. So here's my source. It says, it was an honest mistake, says Roy Baumeister. Now, if I stop right there, and that's all I say, I'm not really sure who he is, why is he talking about this, and how do I trust what he has to say. Um, that's why an adjective clause that goes on to say 
who is a psychology professor at Florida State University and the editor of Self-Esteem, The Puzzle of Low Self-Regard. Um, now I'm giving him credibility. He's a psychology professor. Um, he's an editor of a magazine. So now he has some validity for saying, for us taking his opinion seriously. He's not just some random guy. He's actually, you know, a scholar in the field of psychology for being able to look at um, people's behavioral issues. So now I just added more credibility. So let's talk about relative pronouns. I know I've, I've mentioned it a couple times, but now let's actually look at what they are. So we have relative pronoun that and who, which refer to people, and they function as a subject. So now I'm going to go back to that first slide that I said that there was two different um, kinds of adjective clauses we can use. This is where the difference happens. So let's take a look at our subject. When I know my subject by name, we use who, not that. So for example, David Beckham is my subject, and I know him by name, right? It's not just some person. It's a very specific person. So I can use who, who is a famous soccer player, is my neighbor. So here's my adjective clause, who is a famous soccer player. Who is describing David Beckham. And in my clause, who is the subject, is is my verb. Okay, so here it's functioning as a subject. And the second example, um, remember how I said I can use adjective clauses to identify my subject? I can use who or that to do so. So, for example, the teacher that is talking to me is really nice, or I can say the teacher who is talking to me is really nice. Again, um, here are my adjective clauses. That is talking to me. Who is talking to me? That and who are referring to the teacher. I'm identifying because I don't know which teacher I'm talking about. And that and who are my subjects. Is talking is my verb. Okay, so it's functioning as the subject in that dependent clause. But we can also have them act as objects. In this example, I say the students whom or who the teacher helped were struggling with their assignments. So again, I have the students is my subject of the main clause. Were struggling is my verb in the main clause. And in the adjective clause here, whom or who is my pronoun, referring to the students. But here, the teacher helped. The teacher is my subject. Um, helped is my verb. Who did the teacher help? The students. So whom or who is acting as the um, object here? And that's because the students are receiving the action of the help from the teacher, and that's why it's the object. Because in this sentence, in this adjective clause, students isn't helping. It's the teacher helping the students. Another example, the assignments that or which the teacher didn't grade were not submitted on time. The assignments is my subject. Um, were not submitted is my verb in the main clause. In my adjective clause, that or which is my relative pronoun referring to the assignments. Um, the teacher um, didn't grade. The teacher is my subject. Did not grade is my verb. What did she not grade? The assignments. So now um, that in which becomes the object because they're the receiving the action of not being graded by the teacher. A couple more examples here. The place where I study English has a long winter. Um, so where I study English is my adjective clause. In my main clause, the place is my subject. Um, has a long has is my verb. And in my adjective clause, where is referring to the place. I as my subject, study is my verb. Okay, And here again we're talking about um, the place kind of being part of that idea of where I study. So it's the object, it is not the subject. Because the place isn't studying, I am studying. And finally in our last example it says the semester when students want to study the least is always summer. So the semester uh, is always summer, the semester is my subject, is is my verb, inside of my adjective clause I have when students want to study the least, students is my subject, want is my verb, um, and we're talking about time, so 
when do students want to study the least um, in the semester. So again, it's not the action of the sentence. The semester is part of that um, dependent clause, but it's not wanting to study. It's the students who want to study the least. And then we have another relative pronoun, whose, which is indicating possession. So in this example, the student whose phone was stolen called public safety. The student is my subject, called is my verb in my main clause, and then whose phone was stolen. So um, here, if I look, if I take apart these um, sentences and put it back to complete sentences that are separate, it would read, the student called public safety, his phone was stolen. So again, it's not a subject because whose, um, I'm sorry, because phone is the subject, was stolen is the verb, and his is indicating possession, and his would become whose in my adjective clause to refer to um, the student and his phone. Alright, thank you for watching, and look out for parts two and three coming soon. Subscribe below and leave comments for anything else you'd like to see.